just want to say thanks for coming. Uh, kind of brought this webinar together based on a lot of um, questions that people had about local recreation um, around uh, time of COVID-19, where to get out and what to do responsibly. Um, so first of all, my name is Sandra Townsend and I'm one of the outdoor program coordinators and I'll let Trevor and Nate introduce themselves. And then if you want to just like let us know what you're interested in um, or if you're just hoping to get any ideas, uh, let me know or let us know and we'll kind of go through our presentation and we can kind of tailor to this smaller group we got going on. Yeah, so Trevor? Yeah, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, Trevor Fulton, Outdoor Program Director. Um, love getting outside, love sharing places to go on the Palouse. Um, yeah, and I would say uh, you can always use the chat function on Zoom here if, uh, if that's easiest to kind of start a thread for questions. Nate, go ahead. Yeah, and Jessica, hi. My name's Nate. I'm the other outdoor program coordinator with Sandra. And yeah, coming together as a, as a group to kind of really dive into that um, importance of place and some of those things that we can do around home. Yeah, thank you for coming. Um, so one of my passions right now um, is definitely biking. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the local biking that's around here, um, both mountain biking and then road and gravel. Um, but first of all, mountain biking, uh, making sure that you have uh, the proper equipment before you go out. So making sure you got a bike um, and it's a good working order. You don't want to go out and just get a flat right off the back. Uh, but making sure that you also have like uh, repair tools, knowing how to use them. Uh, thankfully, we're all spending lots of time on the internet and there is a plethora of YouTube videos that will tell you how to change a flat. Don't listen to Stephen Colbert's though. Uh, definitely, please don't use a screwdriver. Um, definitely have a helmet. Um, and then just making sure that you're bringing some extra snacks, water, that kind of thing. Uh, one of my favorite resources to use to know where I am, uh, especially on Moscow Mountain, um, is trailforks.com. Um, it's not just for mountain biking though. Um, it's sort of a crowdsourced um, website that lots of admins have been adding local information um, and they've been going outside of just mountain biking. Mountain biking is definitely their bread and butter though, but they are going outside of that to the point of where they're having some cross country skiing trails. Um, they're on like Palouse Divide kind of area up there um, and just local road runs, that kind of stuff. Um, so local mountain biking, uh, the easiest one is Moscow Mountain, uh, which I'm sure you're probably aware of. Uh, the Moscow Area Mountain Bike Association are the folks that kind of help put the trails together. All of those trails are on private property. So just being aware of that um, and just being respectful of the land that's there. There are quite a few um, trailheads. Uh, Headwaters is obviously the one that most people know. Um, doing the Headwaters Loop, super fun. It's about five miles or so. Uh, but you can actually just go up the road if you want to just uh, skip that loop and then you can go down Bellow or you can just keep on going on that um, uh, ridge road that's right there. There is some snow that's up there right now, uh, but as the weeks kind of keep on going, especially with this rain that's happening right now, um, hopefully that will become more accessible. Uh, then, uh, like Nate was talking about, Little Boulder, um, that five mile loop is actually really awesome uh, beginner friendly mountain biking. Um, there's a nice flat section that's paved that's right next to the river there. And then you just kind of go up and around um, over, uh, pretty easy to explore in that area. Uh, and then if you're going out towards um, past Potlatch, uh, going towards Palouse Divide, the White Pine Campground area actually has quite a few trails that are around there. All of those are also on trail forks. And then Feather Creek um, is just before that a little bit on the left. Um, and that's uh, pretty beautiful also. Great place to have a nice hike. Uh, the hardest part right now is probably actually driving into probably has a bit of snow still right now, but hopefully that'll be burning off soon. No snow, great. Uh, so that's where I'm going this weekend apparently. <laughs> um, and uh, rumor has it that there might be a couple of mushrooms um, that you can find up there also. So um, I, I can't I can't speak to snow on the trail, but you can get to the trailhead. You can get the trailhead also. <laughs> Um, there's actually some camping around there. Uh, one of the things to note though with all of these areas um, that are on public land is that most of them are not being maintained right now since a lot of the staff um, aren't exactly going out. So there might be down tre um, trees uh, and things like that. So just being aware of that situation. Uh, 
restrooms and such are probably not getting quite as maintained as often. And so just making sure that you're uh, packing in and pack out what you've got. Um, and if you feel like getting some trail karma and you have a little saw, like, you know, feel free. Um, so that's kind of mountain biking. Um, and again, there's lots of trails that are on Moscow Mountain. Um, and also kind of beforehand, you probably already know this, like um, there's Eilers Ridge, um, Eilers Rest, sorry, that's kind of in that area. Uh, that's on Moscow Mountain. And then West Twin Road is also an area that you can park up next to the gate. Um, and then you can kind of walk up the road up there and getting up to West Twin where the towers are. Um, and there's a pretty spectacular view from there also. Um, and then you can also access from the Troy side. My guess is that there's still a little bit of snow that's over on that side. There's a little bit, but if you're just walking the road or if you're keeping on kind of the south facing side of the mountain, most of it's out. I'll burned out. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And then there's going to be little patches of snow well into June, um, just in little hidden areas and such, like the cedars or just the north facing stuff. Um, and then road and gravel biking. Um, the Palouse is rich in uh, lots of asphalt and gravel um, roads. Um, again, just making sure that your gear is in good um, order. Uh, the real easy low hanging fruit is going to be the Leitau Trail up to Troy. Um, you can keep on going through that and go down to um, the Little Bear kind of um, area down there. You can also beforehand, if you want to go, you can connect up onto Lenville Loop. And then you can also uh, go to Orchard Loop, uh, which is going to be just north of that trail. Um, and that adds a good 40 miles um, total loop if you want to do that. That's actually one of the only fully roaded um, like asphalt loops that's in Latah County. Um, so if you're completely allergic to gravel, that's, as far as I know, the only loop that you can actually do. Uh, but if you are into gravel, there's a plethora of options. And then obviously, um, if you want to go um, west, you can go on the trip, uh, Chipman Trail out to Pullman. And then there's lots of stuff that's going to be north and south of Pullman that you can kind of add on. One of my favorites is go out to Albion um, and then just go on the other side of 95, find some roads, get a little lost, come back kind of deal. It takes a couple of hours kind of. Um, and then, yeah, gravel rides. Uh, there is lots and lots of gravel. Uh, one of my personal favorites is to actually just go uh, north of town before I hit the mountain um, and then just go to Troy, kind of on the back roads, go through uh, Robinson Park, that kind of area. Super pretty in there. Um, and then, yeah, you can go south into Genesee, Julieta. Uh, that's going to be a longer uh, gravel grind. Uh, the last time I did was like took 60, 65 miles, something like that. Uh, so it takes three or four hours, making sure that you're well provisioned for that. Um, along with any uh, mountain biking, or sorry, any road or gravel biking, uh, there is definitely going to be uh, a wind situation. Uh, so just being aware, uh, maybe timing uh, your ride so you're not fighting the entire time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then uh, Palouse Divide is a little bit of further of a drive uh, if you want to go on Forest Service roads. And then probably the best kept secret is just on the other side of town, and that's Paradise Ridge. It is a little bit of a brutal climb getting up to the top on the road, uh, but the view is incredible. And there's actually little mountain biking trails that go down if you want to gravel grind on those um, coming back into town. Uh, pretty rare to find anyone else up there. So, yeah. And I'll uh, real quick, I'll what before you jump into resources, I'll yeah. add uh, the, the filling station here in Troy is open for takeout. Uh, great little stop off for ice cream or a cup of coffee, or they've actually been doing food every day as well. So, uh, if you're looking to take a ride or a hike and get a snack before you head home, it's a good spot. Heck yeah! So, yeah, um, places where you can find other resources, um, our website. Uh, uiho.edu slash outdoor program. Um, if you go on the resources and then uh, at the bottom, there's this regional outdoor activities. If you click on that, uh, there's a whole lot of uh, PDFs that are going to have a whole list of different activities that you can do. Um, and then we have uh, different conditions. So you don't have to search the and scour the internet to see uh, weather or river conditions. Just go on our website and we'll get up all the links. Um, like we were talking about, American Whitewater is a great resource. Trail Forks is another great resource. 
Uh, Strava is all user-based data. Uh, kind of, uh, if other people are using Strava, it collects um, your data of where you went. Uh, one of the coolest res uh, resources that I have is their heat map. So you can actually see what are the most popular routes in the area. Um, it's just an interesting way of seeing uh, where people go um, if you can't find other people to get beta. And then the Mambo website um, definitely has some information. And then I think one of the best riches, rich places to get uh, information is just local Facebook groups. Uh, like Nate was talking about, Palouse uh, Roadrunners have a good Facebook group. Mamba has a great Facebook group that they update all the time. Um, I know Lady Shredders of the Palouse has a, a Facebook group. Just all of these little groups uh, will have daily uh, or at least weekly updates on conditions. And so becoming a part of those communities um, just gives you a lot of ideas of what current conditions are. And